Hi and welcome back to another video. Today we are talking about Zoom and how to host a meeting. This will be a relatively quick tutorial just going through the setup process on how you can start um, to schedule and host your own meetings using Zoom. Um, if you find this useful please do click on the like button, hit subscribe and tap that bell, it means a lot to the channel. Um, and with all that said let's jump on over to Zoom. Okay, so here I am just inside um, the Zoom desktop application. Now, obviously, you can use um, the online um, web portal um, to basically um, set up your meetings, etc., just like from um, any Google, Google Chrome, and you just access that through zoom.us. Um, and then from here, you can um, set up and schedule meetings. But in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the desktop app. Um, just down here and uh, use this to basically um, set up the scheduled meeting um, and then start that meeting as the host. Um, so I have actually already got this one here scheduled so what I'm going to do is actually just click on edit um, and this is going to edit the meeting that I currently have in place um, and you guys can see um, how this basically works um, from a scheduling point of view um, and I'll talk you through each one of these options before driving into um, the actual meeting itself. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do if this was a new meeting or just say um, scheduled meeting or new meeting etc you give your meeting a topic uh, something um, that the meeting is going to be about a little bit of the agenda whatever it may be so in this example here I've literally just called it the office guys zoom meeting I then obviously have the date of when the meeting is taking place which is 1245 and it's going to run for six hours um, if you would like it to be a reoccurring meeting you can tick this box here and then schedule how that how um, that reoccurring meeting is going to take place is it a daily meeting is it a weekly meeting uh, monthly yearly etc right and um, so you can set up your reoccurrence um, just here then um, you get the ability here to use a personal meeting ID or a generated ID I personally believe that a generated ID is going to be the better option um, although sometimes you might want to use a personal meeting ID if there are not that many meetings um, and you are in pure control over the number of meetings that will be happening um, on your personal ID um, if however you schedule many meetings and sometimes you schedule meetings for other people I would prefer the, to use the actual generated ID and it's what I would recommend that you guys do too. Um, next on here is to give your password a meeting. Now this is not something that is required but I would highly recommend that you do. Um, it just kind of adds a little bit of a extra level of security to your meetings. Um, if however you're setting up a meeting for a, a large group of people to gather um, you might not want to do so in which case you can just untick it but for me personally I like to tick a meeting um, password and then when I send my invites out it actually includes the password in the invite um, and therefore people can join using that password. Um, it kind of just prevents ad hoc people randomly popping up which were not invited. Um, okay, next you, here you have the ability to um, turn video feeds on or off for the hosts as well as the participants. Um, and I say hosts because we will get to that in a moment where we can add additional hosts. Um, but here I obviously have mine set off. Um, I only have that selected as off because I'm using my camera already um, in this uh, video tutorial. Um, otherwise I'd have this as selected as on. Um, for the participants I have selected it as off um, but we can obviously turn that on by default if we would like. And these settings um, can be overwritten by the hosts in the meeting but also the participants can toggle their cameras on and off as they see fit anyway. This is just the kind of like the preset going into the meeting. Next is we have audio. So audio via telephone or computer audio or um, my personal preferred option here of telephone and computer as it kind of ticks most of the boxes. Um, so I always generally say if we want people to um, use audio devices, we want them to use their telephone or their computer audio. Um, underneath there, there is the option of then adding countries into your meeting. So if I just edit this here, we can see that I've already invited the United Kingdom, the United States, Switzerland, Portugal and Italy um, into this meeting. And obviously we have all these other options to select from. And the reason for this is when you send the meeting invites out um, and 
um, people it might be joining by a mobile phone or um, something like that, then um, each one of these um, countries has a um, unique area code or country code that's basically pre-generated into your meeting invite that basically allows um, the participants to easily navigate to the correct um, dial-in numbers that are relevant for them. Um, so if you have people in multiple countries um, who will be joining potentially from um, a cell phone, mobile phone, um, or mobile device in general, then um, you want to make sure you have the right country selected here. Um, if you don't, it's not the end of the world, but um, not everyone's going to be using the Zoom apps um, or via the web. Some some people will just be using um, the dialing codes via the mobile phones. Um, so it's important that we include the, the correct area codes and correct dialing numbers for each specific country. Um, so I always make sure that I select the countries in which um, my participants are from. Um, with that done, I can just select done there. Next on the list is whether I'm going to send my invite into um, a particular calendar. Um, so for example, if I have an Outlook calendar, I can send this particular meeting, this scheduled meeting to my Outlook calendar, to my Google calendar, or to another calendar. Um, so you know, I either go, I'm either personally going to use Outlook or Google Calendar. It's going to be one of these two that I use. Um, if you are whether you want to use an I um, your iPhone calendar, your iCalendar, um, Apple calendar or whatever, then you might want to use other. Um, but yeah, those are the three options that we have there. Um, next is the advanced options. Now by default, when you go to set this up, it won't be expanded. I expanded that when I first opened this meeting. Um, and this gives you a little bit extra functionality. So do you want to enable a waiting room? Um, so I have this as enabled, and then I've also enabled the um, enable join before host. Um, so these two things um, coupled together, basically it puts everyone into a waiting room until the host um, has actually joined the meeting. Okay, and then the host will, will um, in essence, actually um, invite them into the meeting to start. Um, without that selected, um, so for example, if I don't have a waiting room, they'll join the meeting straight away. Um, with the meeting room enabled, they'll join the waiting room first, um, and then go into the meeting after the waiting room. Um, here, I get the bot option to um, mute participants upon entry into the meeting. Um, I have that unselected, but um, if there's a lot of chatty folks out there who, um, when they join a meeting, are halfway through a conversation, um, then you might find that that's a really useful feature for you. Um, I don't have it selected, but you know it all depends on on the participants at the end of the day. Um, the next is um, only uh, authenticated users can join um, sign into Zoom. So basically. They have this forces all of your participants to be um, registered with Zoom. Um, I don't have that selected because sometimes you're inviting people who are maybe using Microsoft Teams um, into a Zoom call um, or vice versa. So generally, I don't have that selected. I, I just like it if it's a bit free for all. If I've invited them via an email, I don't need them to be um, signed into Zoom as well. Um, and the last option here, or the second to last option, is the automatically record meeting. So this basically starts a recording of the meeting the second that um, the meeting starts, and you get the option of saving it into the cloud or saving it locally on your desktop um, or within your documents of your Windows application or Windows operating system. So um, this is really useful, but I think you'd, you'd probably want to um, make sure you only really record the meetings that are uh, utmost importance to you um, like this otherwise you can still record ad hoc um, whilst the meeting has taken place to automatically record a meeting um, I think you'd you know there are ex there are examples where you might want to do it such as a board meeting you want to take minutes um, or very important personnel meetings in which case sure um, but fundamentally record once you're in the meeting is probably the the most cost effective way of doing it because you're going to eat up into your cloud space or your um, local C drive is going to fill up um, pretty fast with Zoom recordings. Um, and the very last part here is the ability to add alternative hosts. So if you're setting up meetings for someone else, um, you can add their email address here um, and they can become the host of the meeting. 
Okay, with all of that done, you can click save. I'm just going to click cancel. Um, but once you've saved it, your meeting is now scheduled in to um, Zoom. From here, you can see that this one here um, was started at 12.45. Um, so I'm actually able to jump straight into here. So rather than clicking join, I can actually just click start from the app here. Um, if, however, I am in my Outlook calendar, my Google calendar, I can just go to that um, particular meeting and join from there as well. Um, but what I'm going to do is just click start here and this takes me straight into the meeting where I click on join with computer audio um, and now I can maximize this screen and I am inside my meeting um, and from here you can see that I have um, access to my mute uh, to mute my microphone um, to add my um, video feed in um, but obviously I'm using my camera already so I can't do that um, and that's just a toggle button you can turn it on and off um, security lets me um, turn off what parts of um, the Zoom meeting I want um, my participants to actually be involved in um, and what parts I don't think that they should be doing themselves. Um, I get a list of the participants just here. Um, sometimes this is docked to the uh, right hand side. Um, but um, so yeah, you can lock your meeting and so forth. So I just have this as a floating um, box here. So for my multiple monitors, I can have. Um, my chat feeds and etc in separate boxes. Um, chat, as I said before, can obviously appear down here. Um, and obviously I can close that down as well. Um, screen sharing, we can do that from here as well. So I can share a particular screen with you guys uh, in the meeting. And I can record the meeting, as I mentioned earlier, um, and then um, save that recording locally or to the cloud. Um, and then support, which um, is an option that you get to add in your settings in the back end of Zoom, which basically then lets you provide one-on-one -on -one, um, support to a participant um, if they need it. So you can take over their computer and so forth. Um, and that is it, guys. Hopefully you found this uh, useful. If you did, um, please do click on the like button and hit subscribe. It means a lot to the channel. Um, and with all that said, I'll catch you guys in the next video.